Hello everyone, this is Todd Blankenship with Rocketstock.com and today we're talking about our new pack, Creator. In this pack, we're giving you over 250 elements, all of the elements that you need to create a graphics package for all of your video content. In this pack, we have lower thirds, backgrounds, buttons, icons, overlays, transitions, logo reveals. This pack has everything you need and all of it is completely customizable. All of these elements were designed to be used in Premiere, Final Cut, and After Effects. And they were all designed to be used with 4K footage, but you can also downscale it to use it for 1080. And another thing to keep in mind is, all of these elements were created in both a light version and a dark version. So you can really pick how you want to use these elements for your content in particular. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to customize each of these elements in all three programs. Let's get started. Okay, so let's get started in Premiere. What I have here is this clip of this woman on a green screen, and let's say she has a makeup YouTube channel, and her name is Sally. So let's give Sally a graphics package for her YouTube channel. So I'm going to go ahead and import the creator pack, and when you download the creator pack, you'll see that you have a creator dark and creator light option. And there's also this folder of icons and in screens, but we'll get into that later. So for her, I'm gonna go ahead and use the light option. But keep in mind as we go through this that for every element that I'm using, you can also choose the dark version of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and import both the light version and the in screens folder. If you open up the folders, you'll see that there are backgrounds, logo reveals, lower thirds, overlays, and transitions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these elements to create kind of an intro to her YouTube channel. So I have a few clips of just some makeup-y looking people doing makeup things. And we're going to go ahead and use some of our transitions to build a really nice stylish intro for her channel. So I'm going to grab a little bit of each clip and we'll just drag it to a new sequence by dragging it right onto the new item button there. And we'll just kind of make like one second each. And obviously this can be whatever footage you want. And let's just make sure that everything is scaled to the correct frame size. All right, so here we go. We have a few shots back to back to back. I'm going to use some transitions to kind of start off the video here. So we're going to go to the transitions and you'll see that there are also matte files for the transitions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just select a transition that I want to use. And this one looks pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that down. So I've dragged my transition down and you'll see it's a, it's nothing's happening yet. And what you'll want to do is set one video layer that will be your graphics layer, one video layer that will be your matte layer, and then one video layer that will just be kind of your in-between clips. And I'll explain how that works in just a second. So we have this transition here and what we need to do is make sure that there's video on both the front and end of both of these clips here. So you need video to cover the entire transition here. And so right here we have transition graphics one and you'll see that there's a matte file that corresponds with that, transition matte one. So I'm gonna grab that and I'm gonna slide it right underneath the graphics layer. So always remember this, it's the graphics on the top, the matte right below that, and below that are your two footage layers. So what we need to do is create a matte for the second layer and you'll search track matte, track matte key right there in the keying section and you'll drag that to your second clip. And so now you'll go to your effect controls and you need to tell the effect to look at the correct matte video layer. So here you see matte, we hit the options are video three and four. And so you'll see V3, V4. What the matte layer is, is V3 here. So we're gonna tell it to go to video three. And we're also going to select matte luma. So real quick, I wanna show you. What's happening here is a bunch of really confusing stuff. It's not working correctly. And that's because these were made for 4K and we have a 1080 sequence here. So what I need to do is select both of these layers. I'm going to right click them and I'm going to select scale to frame size. So now our transition is the appropriate size. And so now you'll see we have a nice transition. But the problem that we're having is that once the matte layer is gone, our clip disappears. And that's a quick fix. All you got to do is just cut your second clip here and just delete the effect from the second half where the matte layer stops. And then there you go. Now it'll stay up. So we have a nice transition there. And, you know, let's say that the red here isn't really what you want to go for with your channel. That's a really, really quick fix. All you need to do is go over here to your effects panel and we'll grab a fast color corrector. So right there, fast color corrector, drag it onto your graphics layer. And if you scroll down a bit, you'll see this nice little hue angle option. We're just going to take that and we'll change it to whatever color we like. 
So she's, let's say she's got a purple, kind of a darkish, bluish purple look to her channel. So there we go. Now we got that. And I'm going to go ahead and do that for a couple other clips. So again, we're going to grab, let's just do transition two this time. Just drag it on. Again, make sure that there's video on both the top and bottom. I'm going to cut the video on both sides so it's all kind of constrained to this one area. So we have the graphics layer here. I'm going to put it right back up on the correct layer. And then I'm going to grab the mat for that transition. I'm going to select both of them. I'm going to scale to frame size real quick. And then we're going to take our track mat key again. And we're going to drag it to the footage layer here. And now we'll go ahead and select the correct video layer again. So that's going to be three again. And we're going to switch it to Matt Luma. And this time you'll see we're going from the top layer to the bottom layer. We're here, we were going from the bottom layer to the top layer. So there's a nice little button for that. You just hit reverse. And there you go. You got a nice little montage. I'm going to go ahead and just put that purple from the other one again. So we go to our effects on the graphics layer here. I'm going to select the fast color corrector, hit command C to copy. And I'm going to select that and click there. And I'm going to select our next transition here, the one that's still red. And I'm going to just paste that effect right there. What we're going to do now is we need to take out the green. And luckily, this pack also comes with some backgrounds. Let's go ahead and see what background three looks like. Okay, I think that one will work. So we're going to shift everything up one video layer. Now what that's going to do is it's going to break our transition because we told it to look for video three where the matte layer is. Really easy fix. All you got to do is go to your matte effect and just select video four this time. And so now we still transition into the correct shot here. And there's Sally hosting the show. I'm going to go ahead and key out her shot here. So I'm going to go ahead and select ultra key from our effects panel, drag it to our green screen footage here, and then select the footage and go to the ultra key effect. And we'll just grab this medicine dropper here. And I like to select right next to their head. And then let's just go ahead and kind of clean up a little bit. So I like to mess with some of the transparency and highlight and stuff like that. So this, this will be different for every uh, occasion here. These are the settings that you will play with. You'll, the uh, pedestal, shadow, highlight, tolerance, sometimes the contrast sort of helps a little bit. And you'll just pull a nice clean key. That'll look all right. And then let's just take our background, background three here, and place it right underneath. Now these are all loopable. So to loop it, all you got to do is just select it, hold down the Alt key, and drag out, just like that. And right there you go. We're off to a great start. We got a nice little intro for the show. And now we need to go ahead and introduce our host here. So I'm going to bring in a lower third. So let's go ahead and just grab one of the single line ones here. And you'll see, again, way too big, and it's not positioned correctly. So we're going to right-click it, and we're going to say scale to frame size, because, again, these were made for 4K. And I'm also just going to go ahead and bring it down. And so here we go. Now we've got this intro and then this pops up. Just make sure it's kind of positioned where I like it. There you go. Now you've got a nice little spot to put a lower third. And again, her name was Sally. So for this pack in the demo, if you want it to look like it does in the demo, we use the font Montserrat. And Montserrat is a free font. It's a Google font. You can download it from Font Squirrel or Google Fonts or whatever. So if you want your videos to look like the ones in the demo video, uh, Montserrat is the font that you're going to want to use, but you can use whatever you like. So I'm going to go ahead and use Montserrat to finish out this lower third here. And you'll select the text tool and just click over your lower third. And over here, I'm going to select the font I like. Again, Montserrat. I'm going to come over here, click, make sure it's selected, and type in Sally. Now there, it's white, so obviously we can't see it. I'm going to fill it with, let's try black. And we can change the text settings here. So I'm going to go ahead and scale it down some. I'm going to go for black. And let's just go ahead and give her a last name, Sally Rocketstock. And what you need to do is, as the lower third transitions in, you'll want to go ahead and fade your text in. And so as the lower third transitions in here. You want to wait till the spot where it looks like, okay, right about there. That's that's where we should start the fade. So I'm going to trim the lower third right about there. And I'm going to have the text fade in right about that point. And the way that you'll do that is hover over your clip here. And when you get that little icon there on your mouse, you'll just right click and select apply default transition. And there you go. Now you have crossfade added right to your graphic. And you can make that as fast or slow as you like. And again, I want to go ahead and make sure that we have the correct color for our lower third. So I'm going to go find our fast color corrector again. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it to our lower third now. So now everything's nice and purple. And so here you go. In a really short period of time, we created a nice little intro. 
and we're into the show here. Okay, so let's talk about logo reveals. This pack also includes logo reveals in both the light and dark options. So what we have here is one of the backgrounds from the pack and the Rocket Stock logo right on top. And we're going to use one of these logo reveals to animate the logo on. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the Elevator logo reveal and let's look at it real quick. So it's a square that kind of remains on screen. So what we want to do is have the logo on top of this animation. Now sometimes it's different where the logo reveal actually covers up the logo and then it reveals that way. But this time the logo is meant to stay on top of the box. So we're going to take this logo layer here and I'm going to put it with a spot below and a spot above. Then we're going to take the matte file for the elevator logo reveal and place it above our logo. And then we're going to also take the graphics layer and put it on the bottom right above our background here. Now keep in mind that this is a 1080 sequence so what we're going to do is select both of those and we're going to right click and say scale to frame size. So now everything's sized appropriately. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take our logo layer here and we're going to put a track mat key on that. So just like before we're going to go to effect controls. We're going to set it to the correct video layer which in this case is video 4 and we're going to change that to a Matt Luma. And let's check it out. So now we have a really cool looking logo reveal. And just like before, if we wanted to change the color, bring up the fast color corrector, put it on the graphics layer, and change the hue angle. So getting started in Final Cut, it's all going to work very similarly to the way that it does in Premiere with just a few subtle differences. So in this case, let's say we're doing kind of a travel vlog, travel style vlog, and uh, this guy's the host, so let's just do kind of the same thing. So first, let's get started with transitions. First, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a clip here. So I'm gonna select this one and just bring it down to our sequence here. And here, what we wanna do is go ahead and have a transition between two different clips here. So I'm gonna grab another clip and just drop it down. And let's pull down this transition right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just lay that on top and see how long that is. And again, just like before, we need to make sure we have video to cover the entirety of the transition itself. So I'm going to drag this over here, and I'm also going to take the matte layer for this transition, which we have right here, transition matte 7, and I'm going to drop it right below our graphics layer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select our matte layer, and I'm going to go up to our compositing tab here, and for the blend mode, I'm going to select Silhouette Luma. So now that we have that, I'm going to select both of those layers, and I'm going to right-click and select New Compound Clip. I'm going to hit OK. And now I'm going to take our graphics layer, lay it on top, and then put the next clip below it and line it up with the bottom of that. So now we should have a transition between the two clips. And again, just like in Premiere, if you wanted to change the color, you could go over to your effects over here and select a hue and saturation effect and drag it to the graphics layer. Then come up here to the U angle and just change it to whatever color you want. Okay, so now we have kind of another similar intro to the one we had before. It's just two different transitions into kind of a shot of our host in front of the screen here. And I'm going to go ahead and key this shot out because he's got a, a green screen background. And so to do that, we're going to go to the effects panel over here, go to keying, and we'll just grab the keyer and just drag it onto the clip. And usually in Final Cut, the keyer is actually really good. So if you just drag it on, if you have a even halfway decently lit green screen, you'll get a pretty decent key like you see here. So now we have this background behind him. And this is from the Creator Pack again. This is background one of the darker elements. I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate that to facilitate the length of this shot. So to do that, it's just like in Premiere, you hold down the Alt key, you click on your clip, and you drag, and that's going to make a copy. There you go. Now we are into the show. To create a lower third, you'll just take a lower third element. I'm going to choose this one right here, and we'll just drop it right on top. And again, these are going to need to be scaled to however you like it for your particular video. So I'm going to scale it down a little bit. It looked a little big. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the transform tools here, and let's just move it down to the lower corner. So just like before, we're going to scroll over to a point where it looks like the text should start fading up, and I'm going to call it right about there. So I'm going to go up here and click on the Titles and Generators button, and we're going to go to Titles, and I'm going to select Basic Title and just drag that down on top of our lower third here. And so there we go. We have a text element. And just like before, I'm going to choose Montserrat as our font, and I'm going to use black again. And I'm going to go ahead and just size that up just so I can see it, and we'll go ahead and just move it into place. I'm going to go ahead and left align it, and let's just go ahead and type in a name. Let's just call him John. He's John Rocketstock. He's married to Sally from before. 
And again, we're going to find that spot where the text needs to come in, probably right about there. We'll start fading it. So I'll just move it to right there. And then I'm going to go to our transitions here. And we're going to find dissolves and grab a cross dissolve and just drop it right at the beginning of the clip there. So there you go. Now you've got a lower third fading in with a nice little lower third animation. Okay, so now we're in After Effects and we've got this guy and uh, this time he's going to do a show about woodworking. And I'm sorry, that's the best I could come up with. So we have these two clips and we're going to go ahead and create a opening montage or something like that for this guy's channel. So I'm going to grab all three of these clips and I'm just going to drag them down to a new comp button. I'm going to go ahead and just select single composition and select sequence layers. And so there we go. We got these two clips here and then our host of our show here. Okay, and this time I'm going to use the creator light options. And to start, I want to go ahead and have a background underneath the whole thing. And After Effects, that's really easy. You can just take whichever background you select. So I'm just going to go with this one right here. And I'm going to go ahead and right click it and go to interpret footage, main. And down here on the loop option, you can loop it as many times as you want. So I'm going to go ahead and just type in something real crazy like 99. And I'm just going to take that and drag it down beneath. So now we just have a really long background that's infinitely looping at, well, at least 99 times worth. And now I'm going to go and grab a transition. So we have these two clips, and we're going to transition between the two of them, and then we're going to transition into our main shot here. So I'm going to go to the Transitions folder. I'm going to grab Transition 14 here, and we're going to drag that into our comp, and we're going to line it up with the end of the first shot, and we're going to move the second shot to the start of our transition here. And just like before, we're going to grab the mat layer. So right here, transition mat 14. I'm going to drag it underneath and I'm going to go ahead and drag that to match the transition layer. I'm going to zoom in real quick and just make sure it's lined up perfect. And it is. What we need to do is use this mat layer to create a track mat for the footage layer itself. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to click on the footage layer. I'm going to go to the track mat. I'm going to turn it to luma mat inverted. And again, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to double check the size. So if we go to the composition settings, we can see that this is a 1920 by 1080 comp. And so of course, what we need to do is select both of our transition layers here. And I'm gonna right click, go to transform and select fit to comp. So now it is appropriately sized. And so here we go, here's what we got so far. And that is a really slick transition. So I'm gonna go ahead and transition out of this shot as well. So this time we'll grab, let's say, graphics 11 here and I'm going to move it to the front of the next shot and I'm going to take the mat do the same thing line that up with the graphics layer and this time I'm going to zoom in again make sure it's lined up perfect and then we also need to scale them appropriately let's not forget that again and I'm going to right click go to transform fit to comp and we're going to take our footage layer select luma inverted mat okay so here's what we got so far So it's a nice little opening transition and let's go ahead and key out our host here. So I'm going to take our footage layer here and I'm going to go up to effect, go to keying and we're going to select key light. And then I'm just going to select the green color right next to his head here. Let's double check it. I'm going to go ahead and solo that layer by clicking this button right here. And I'm going to isolate the alpha channel. So I'm going to go to this little thing with the three color wheels here and I'm going to go to alpha. And there you go. Now you can see we got a little bit of junk going on here. So I'm going to go to the screen mat options here for the key light effect. And I'm going to clip black until all that goes away. And then now we're getting a little bit of transparency in his shirt here because it was, I, I believe it was a black shirt. And then I'm going to bring down the white. And usually like around 30 and 70, you're going to always pull a pretty perfect key. I'm going to go back to the channel selector here and I'm going to switch back to RGB. And I'm going to unsolo that layer. And there we go. We got a really nice looking key. So just as before, I'm going to go ahead and give him a lower third. So I'm going to go to our lower thirds folder and let's just do a another single line. And you'll see here we have some of these social options. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull, let's say, the Instagram one. This is where he shares all of his, I don't know, finished woodworking projects. And I'm going to scale that to 50%. So I'm going to hit the S key and I'm going to type in 50. And we're going to drop that down. And we're going to go ahead and fade in some text on top of this lower third. Right about here is where I want it to fade in. So I'm going to click there. I'm going to go ahead and left align it in the paragraph tab here. And let's 
go ahead and change it to Montserrat again. And this time I'll just leave it on regular. And we'll just type in woodworking projects, and that'll be the name of his YouTube channel. And we'll just make it a nice color. I think a dark gray will work. And let's just drag that down into the lower third here. And you'll go ahead and click the text layer and make sure the playhead is where you want the text to start fading in. And then we're gonna hit the left bracket key. And that's just gonna shift the whole layer over. And I'm gonna hit the T key to drop down the opacity. Go ahead and start the stopwatch. That's gonna start creating keyframes. And I'm gonna just take this keyframe and drag it over, let's say about a second and a half. And then I'm going to change this first part to zero. So now we have a zero keyframe and a hundred keyframe, which means it's gonna fade up just like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the all caps for this text layer. I think that'll look better. Okay, and after a quick RAM preview, here's what we've got. So obviously, if red is not your color, you don't have to go with red. We'll just go to the graphics layer. We'll go to effect, color correction, hue and saturation, and we'll just change the U angle again. So let's say maybe he's more of a orange to yellow kind of guy. So we'll just go ahead and select that and we'll hit command C to copy. And let's just go to all of our other elements here and paste that effect. And here you go. Here's the result with the colors changed. Okay, and let's talk about logo reveals in After Effects. So right here, I have another one of the light backgrounds from the pack, and I'm gonna go ahead and just drop in the Rocket Stock Insignia. I'm gonna scale it to wherever I want it. Let's try something like that. And I'm gonna grab one of the logo reveals. So this time, let's try the multi-burst logo reveal. So I'm gonna drag the graphics onto it here. And since this is for 4K, I'm gonna go ahead and scale it to 50%. So I'm gonna hit S and hit 50. And now I'm going to drag down the mat, and we're going to put that above the insignia, and we're also going to scale that to 50%. So I'm going to hit S, scale down to 50. So I'm going to go ahead and change the track mat to Luma mat. And so after a quick RAM preview, here's what we have. Also, I wanted to show you a little trick that you can do just in case you didn't want a whitish or darkish background you can actually colorize these backgrounds to whatever color that you want. Now, I'm gonna do this in After Effects, but you can use the same method in both Final Cut and Premiere using the methods that I showed you in their portions of this tutorial. So I'm gonna start with making an adjustment layer, and then I'm gonna go to Effect, Color Correction, Hue and Saturation. Now in Premiere, you would use the Fast Color Corrector, and in Final Cut, you would also use the Hue and Saturation effect. And I'm gonna go ahead and just click this Colorize button, and right here, we can change the saturation level and also bring down the lightness. So there you go. Now you can see we're getting kind of a salmon-y, kind of pinkish color. And I can change this hue slider here to whatever color I want. And let's say we wanted kind of a, a dark blue. So that seems like a good starting point right there. Now I'm going to take the lightness. I'm going to bring it down. And I'm going to kind of lower the saturation just a little bit. And then there you go. Right there, you have a nice dark blue background. And like I said, you can use that same principle with both of the other programs as well. Okay, and let's talk about end screens. So in the creator pack, we include some end screens and some icons that you can use in conjunction with them. The end screens are kind of like the pizza dough and the tomato sauce, and then you get to put on the toppings that you want. For example, what we have here is a double video box end screen. And as you'll see right here, it's just kind of a black screen with some nice animations for video boxes popping up. Now, one thing to know is that there's actually a 75% opacity uh, black solid underneath these box animations. And the reason for that is so that you can put a video underneath or still or whatever you want underneath your in-screen animation and you'll still be able to see and it'll look really nice. So now what I've done is I've placed a video underneath our in-screen animation and let's ram preview real quick and see what we've got. And the way that YouTube works now is you can actually add the video to go in these boxes in the actual Creator Studio app on YouTube itself. And if you go into the icons and buttons folder here, there's a lot of different stuff you can work with. There's a, all the different social media icons. So if you want to have your social information pop up, you can do that. So here's an example of that. Instagram kind of pops up and they're all red. So you can change the color however you like, just like before. This time I'm going to use a fill effect from the generate menu in effects here. So there you go. We have 
Nice little orange Instagram logo. And you can obviously also add text. So I'm gonna add in some text here. I'm gonna have it say, watch more of our videos. If you check out these bursts, there's a lot of really cool animations, just things that you can use to kind of call people's attention to things. And so now when you go into YouTube and you have your video uploaded, and I've uploaded just a little test here. So you have this blue box and that's where everything needs to fit within. And then you have these squares that we set up where our videos will go. So first I'm gonna go ahead and start adding elements. So I'm gonna click over here and you have these four options, video or a playlist. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a video. Then you get these options for most recent upload or where you can choose. I'm gonna go ahead and choose. And I'm gonna grab the demo video for Geneva, our really cool corporate graphics pack that we have. If you haven't seen it, go ahead and check it out. And I'm just gonna scale this demo to the size of our square here. And I'm gonna go ahead and add another video and put it in the other square. I'm gonna go ahead and just click most recent upload. So I'm gonna go ahead and fit that as well. We have these two objects right here. We're gonna actually drag those to the point where we want them to appear. I'd say right about there is where the first video box finishes up. So I'm gonna drag the start point for Geneva right there. And then I'm gonna to go to where the second video box finishes up which I'm gonna say probably right around there. And I'm gonna drag this start point to that point. So now let's check out what we have. You can go full screen and check it out. And so there you go. Now the videos pop up, you can click on them just like links. And obviously you can add your subscribe button right there if you wanted to. So I hope you guys really enjoy the creator pack. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do to upgrade your video content. Always keep in mind that these elements are for 4K so if you need to use them in a 1080 comp, you're gonna have to scale it down. And then also remember that you can colorize these however you like. And as always, if you have any questions or issues, feel free to contact our support staff and we'll be happy to help you out. And be sure to check out rocketstock.com. There's a lot of other great video packs that you can use to upgrade your videos as well.